All right, hello out there in cryptocurrency land. Hello out there in cryptocurrency land. How's everybody doing? Sid, yes, that's why I jumped on. Kind of talking with you guys a little bit while this craziness kind of goes on. Hello. Where's my pop-out chat? Looking for my pop. There we go. Pop-out chat. All right. Let's go down to the 15-minute chart. Kind of go through this whole general market craziness that's been happening. The extreme stream. What's up, dot com? How you doing? Good time to buy, Zane. Go ahead and do that, buddy. Not me. To be quite frank with you, ladies and gentlemen, I just I'm in the middle of uh not making a video, but I already made the video. I haven't posted it yet called Bitcoin's Dead. Put a fork in it. So I think uh yeah, I think Bitcoin's done, guys. I don't think it's going to zero. Don't get me twisted. It's not like that. Okay, long term, I'm a, I'm a believer in Bitcoin, but um, you're not getting any rallies here. Any rallies are going to be very short lived, very short lived in Bitcoin. Good time to buy at two K. All these YouTubers are popularizing Bitmex. Buy base set. <clears throat> so yeah, to be honest with you, I'm trading on BitMEX. I'm trading on BitMEX, but I'm not really advocating that um, people that don't understand markets, to be quite frank with you, from mo most of the people that I meet on YouTube um, qualify as those that don't understand markets. So I, I don't really hype BitMEX that much, but um, I've been trading and I'm, man, this... This extreme, um, this extreme market right now has been leading us to the point where pretty good money on BitMEX. If if you're familiar with how to short, how to trade, and cover um, in very safe manners. So why is this dropping? Well, it's dropping because if you guys watched my psychology video, um, the general hope is being removed from the markets, not so slowly but surely. I say not so slowly because this isn't a slow drop. <laughs> this isn't a this isn't a slow drop. But yes, uh, Simpson Moss is correct. It is the normal market cycle playing out. If you guys are familiar with market cycles, and if you're not, watch my market cycles webinar. You can find that on my website. Um, the market cycle is bearish. It's a bearish market cycle. So you have to understand the type of market you're in, guys. If you're new to investing and you don't know about market cycles. Go take my market cycles webinar, okay? Just take it. It's 22 bucks. Best 22 bucks you'll ever spend. You need to understand the market cycle before you can really trade anything. You can trade anything, okay? All right, so Danny makes a, Danny makes a comment. Markets go parabolic because everyone is buying. Not because everyone is buying, but because nobody is selling Markets correct hardly because everyone is selling and nobody is buying. That there's a half truth to that. Markets go. People sell in parabolic markets. People are always buying and selling, but there's definitely more people buying in parabolic markets. Um, everyone does hold because they see the price appreciation, and um, this is this isn't even late in the bear market, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't even late in the bear market. To be quite frank with you, this is the middle of the bear market. Okay, this is the middle of it. Polykoviv asks, how can I get the bounces on the down move to make some money? You don't. be quite frank with you, um, I would not trade bounces in Bitcoin right now. That would not be a game that I would be interested in playing, nor would I recommend anyone else doing. To be quite frank with you, um, bounces are going to be... If you don't know how to play the bounce, if you don't know how to short, you don't know how to play the bounces. If a lot of the YouTubers keep talk about shorting on BitMEX, what do you think that'll do to the market? I think that'll be detrimental to the market because if you put some uneducated traders in BitMEX, they're going to lose their entire account and then they can't buy Bitcoin anymore. <laughs> they won't be able to buy Bitcoin anymore. So it'll be detrimental to the market, 
to be I mean that that's my honest opinion. If you put if you put a new person in BitMEX just due to the due to the leverage factor, just due to the leverage factor, those accounts will be whittled away slowly but surely. So you're going to have say say 100,000 people join BitMEX, I'd say 60 to 70,000 of those people aren't going to have money to trade. So Robert, obviously you caught me on my live stream. They're asking about May 25th. Um, there's no date, okay? That, it is funny it landed on my birthday, Robert, but there's no specific date in which Bitcoin's gonna bottom, okay? It, it doesn't work like that. Um, there's going to be a range of time, probably mid-May to mid-June, maybe, maybe spread that out, May to June, is when something like that is going to um, is when something like that is going to go ahead and take place. When we're when we're going to see some kind of a bottom. What do I see gold doing March twenty sixth with gold backed then oil futures coming out? Don't they already have gold and oil futures? I don't I don't really follow the gold market to be quite frank with you. I, I I've never been a gold bug. Um, how long, Ryan asked, how long tonight? Not too long, Ryan. There's dinner cooking right now. It's just the market's kind of tanking. Figure I'd jump back on for, for uh, you know, I just figure I'd jump on for some people here. Ask some questions. You know, people want to ask some questions. Gold back? Really? Let me go ahead and Google that. How would you call YouTubers who are calling on buying the dip and holding till a hundred thousand or so? Um, they really fucked up their uneducated audiences. Yeah, no, I, that you are correct. They fucked up a lot of people. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Any idiot, including myself, can start a YouTube channel and start talking whatever the hell they want to talk. And as long as they have confidence in their voice and have a half-ass valid argument, they're going to convince. A lot of people to follow their quote-unquote strategy when it's not a strategy. It's them pulling shit out of their ass because they have a stock chart in front of them. Um, that's why I call my channel Real Crypto. That's literally why I call my channel Real Crypto because I am a real technical analyst. I've had my ass handed to me more times than I can count and I've had my fair share of pain to the point where I'm done with pain. <laughs> okay. A lot of these people that get lucky in cryptos, I've been trading cryptos six months. My account's gone up, you know, 400%. Um, that kind of strategy doesn't work in this kind of market. Doesn't work in this kind of market. They're pulling numbers out of their butts. They are going to hurt a lot of people, and that really kind of pisses me off. I don't know about Polly, Polly on YouTube. I don't really follow a lot of the YouTube guys, to be honest with you. I see their videos as I'm kind of looking through stuff, but... Um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. There's, If you guys see an analyst, come back and ask me about what they said, and I will tell you the real truth. If it has validity, look, I'll give them validity. Okay, I will tell you, you know what, that guy has, has a couple valid points, but take this, this, and this into consideration, okay? I'm not... I'm not kind. I'm not the kind of guy that thinks I'm the I'm the shit, and I'm the only guy that knows what's going on in technical analysis. To be quite frank with you, as a guy on YouTube and TradingView came on called Magic Magic Poop Cannon, um, that guy's pretty good. I mean, that guy's pretty good. I have no problem with most of his analysis. Actually, he came out with one today calling YouTube dead. <laughs> you know, basically saying uh, or YouTube that Bitcoin's done. And to be quite frank with you, I agree. Um, I agree. Bitcoin's basically done. My thoughts on Bitcoin Cash. I haven't looked at Bitcoin Cash in a while. If you're asking fundamentally what I think of Bitcoin Cash, um, I don't have a dog in that fight. I don't really care. It's an asset to trade. It's not looking good here from a technical perspective, though. So if you're asking what's my fundamental thoughts on YouTube or um, Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash, you know what? Let the markets fight it out. I don't have an opinion. I don't really care. A you know, the millions of people that are dealing with cryptocurrencies, um, the millions of people that are that are dealing with cryptocurrencies will 
will hash it out in the market. Um, just by the dip, no one knows anything about TA. That's false. Do do do. Stay away from Bcash. No one knows anything about technical analysis. What about Doug Polk? I don't know who that is. Do you think Bitcoin will go to zero? Absolutely not. Bitcoin will not go to zero. There's zero chance of that happening. There's a huge infrastructure behind Bitcoin. Um, no one will let it go to zero. Letters Word said Bitcoin's up 667% from a year ago, but it's done. Went up 33 cents to 19K and now it's done, LOL. Stock market crash, but it wasn't done. Um, Letters word, you apparently only caught 2% of what I said. 2% of what I said. Bitcoin is done in terms of going up in the, in, in, the, in the near future. That's what I mean. So Bitcoin has had some opportunities to, to go up um, in the past, and it hasn't. And now that it's, now that it's basically completely failed, uh, let me, oh, it's Bitcoin Cash, that's why. I'm looking at Bitcoin Cash. So what I mean by done, is that we're not going back up to 20,000 before we go lower. We are definitely going lower. We're definitely going lower before we go higher. Okay? So we had a little run up in Bitcoin here. I got a little bullish in this in this run here. Made some money on the run up. Made some money on the run up. And we I've mentioned many times in my videos we have to go over 11,775 to go higher. We failed to do that here and we actually just completely collapsed. That is not bullish behavior. That is completely bearish behavior. And to think that we're gonna go higher from here is completely illogical. Completely illogical. So yeah, letters, you know, I. there's a time perspective to trading that is extraordinarily important. It's called a time frame, okay? I, I, I literally cannot, explain to everyone that's going to watch my video what a time frame is. Time frames are extremely important when it comes to talking about investing and talking about trading and especially with the words that you use. So I can't qualify every statement I make in terms of the time frame that, that, that I'm talking about every time that I make the statement. So if you're not here for the entire thing, it's better to ask a more pointed question like, what do you mean by done? That would be a better question to ask. You know, so... Okay, so what do we got here? Do I think Bitcoin will drop below 1300? I don't think that. Um, I have an analysis that calls for between 35 and 2600. That's what my analysis means. That's what my analysis means. You know, that, that's what it takes me to. And I'm gonna put out a video a little later today um, regarding that. There's a better way to word it than done though. Yeah, you know what, letters, maybe there is, but when you talk a lot, <laughs> keep in mind, I don't really get paid for this. You guys don't pay me for this analysis. You didn't pay to get in here. Um, this is all free analysis, so really take it for what it's worth. Um, I really, I find it a little bit interesting, and even as someone that does this, and I put myself out there like this, I get that. I assume risk. I get that. I'm going to get people calling me all kinds of dumb stuff, and I get that, but you guys, ha you guys are getting free analysis. If you want to ask pointy questions, feel free to do so. But don't expect, don't expect me to hold your hand through this entire thing. I'm called Real Crypto. I keep it real. <laughs> okay, I keep it real. Um, so yeah, it's not done, done, but it's it's done for now. It's done for now. You know, I don't think you can definitely appreciate. I don't think you can definitely expect a huge bounce going upwards. And those guys that are calling you to hodl here to 100,000, um, that's fine, but you're gonna be hodling for a long time. I think you're gonna hodl for a long time. Ch um, look for my next video to explain the time series of events that I think is possible to occur, um, is possible to occur. And you know, watch that entire video because um, there's a lot of caveats to this, that, and the other thing. Hey, one BTC. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what that was about, ladies and gentlemen, is I just closed a short that I had and I traded, I do have a BitMEX account and I traded my 0.15 BitMEX account. It's now worth one Bitcoin. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, I'm getting off the point here. Uh, do, 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 do. Look at the volume. Do the look at volume in your analysis. I don't know what that means. 
I do take volume into my analysis. Um, I'm a huge believer in volume. In fact, in my, in my trading courses, I have an entire course dedicated to volume. An entire course dedicated to volume. It's included in everything else too, but it needs its own course. It's that important. Do I believe the G20 summit will cause market to drop more? Um, no, I, I don't know. You know, G, the G20 can cause markets to drop more, but I don't necessarily know about the cryptocurrency market. I'm not sure about the cryptocurrency market. Looks like I got my buddy Corrup dropping a super chat for $20. I appreciate that, my friend. When do you think we'll hit your analysis price points? The more detailed, the better, please. Thanks for your time and efforts, bud. So since Krupp just dropped more money than I make on an actual YouTube video, <laughs> you know, um, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of analysis now. I'll do a little bit of analysis now. Um, okay, so to be quite frank with you, I think we're going to get to the low about somewhere in here somewhere between you know and that's actually too or too early i think we're going to get there kind of mid may to mid june this is my time frame for an approximate all time bottom okay this is my approximate time frame my analysis points me to may 25th but if you want to point out a specific date you're just doing you're just doing clicks okay you you just want people to click on your on your video and i've thought about making titles like that I've thought about that, okay, because I do make a little bit of money off my YouTube videos. Don't get it wrong, but it's not near, I don't make near as much money as, as the analysis is worth, okay, to be quite frank with you. Um, but my analysis points me to May 25th for, for the ultimate low. I, I can guarantee you, though, it's not going to happen on May 25th. <laughs> okay, try, trying to call markets out in time frames and bottoms and highs on specific dates you're stupid to do that. You're just, uh, I don't know. I, I try to keep it real here. I don't want to lie to anyone. And um, it's not happening on May 25th. That's just what the, the, the time analysis points to. So May 25th is the analysis. Um, Elite Investors Club Online Marketing Success. That's a very long name. That's a very long name. But yeah, something like that. I think we're going to get a bottom near the 30, the 36 to, or 35 to 2600 level, somewhere around there, and then um, it's going to go ahead and you know it's going to go ahead and, and go up. So it's going to get go. I think it's going to go up from there. And when are we going to get 20,000 again? I think we're going to hit 20,000 at approximately um, 11 months from now. And I'll say give or take a month. I'll say give or take a month because. Ladies and gentlemen, the further out you go, the more time frame you have to give any analysis because it's all incomplete data because the future hasn't happened yet, okay? The future hasn't happened yet. Does May 25th date include your accelerated time factor for crypto markets? Uh, so far it does, yes. So far it's that is including the accelerated movement based on 2013 up until today. That, that does include that accelerated movement, yes. Is there any book you recommend about trading on crypto? I haven't seen any good trading books on crypto, although I haven't looked for them. So far, my own stock market analysis has proved um, good for crypto, although you have to you have to have some mark, crypto market experience in order to um, in order to kind of morph because there's a morphing that needs to happen based on stock market TA to make it fit tech or crypto TA. There's a morphing there. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Would it be worthwhile to buy on a date of capitulation rather than wait for a proper uptrend to develop? Um, Johnny, I think you can. I think you can do that. I think you can buy. As you know, to be quite frank with you, um, I think I underestimated the significance of this volume. Okay, I think I was so good in calling this downtrend market. I think I let my head get a little too big, and I think, I think I should have bought here and I should have held, and had a wider stop. I actually did buy here at six thousand, but my short was too was too close, and I got stopped out, and then it proceeded higher. So I think you can buy on a capitulation bottom. I shouldn't. I don't think that should be your only. I don't think that should be your only buy though. 
Dan, what's up, buddy? You bought that Bolkowski book that I've been talking about? Excellent, and it looks like it helped you out. Fantastic. Fantastic. Lagging? Lagging, huh? I'm not seeing any lagging on my side, not yet. Doesn't mean it's not there, doesn't mean it's not there, but I just looked at my, my, uh, my streamer gives me kilobits per second output and uh, looks okay. Uh, what's the name of the book I told him, Reese? It is um, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. If you go to my website, real-crypto.com, I do have an affiliate link there. If you do want to go ahead and buy that through that link, I'll, I'll get like 50 cents, but anything's better than nothing. I'd appreciate the support. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps me out. You heard it here first. Um, Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. It's it's a crazy ass book. <laughs> to be quite, it's like, let me grab my copy. Let me grab my copy of the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. It is over six hundred pages. Uh, yeah, I'll go into real dash crypto. Dot com slash resources slash books. Um, if you go there, you can go ahead and um, check out that book. But yeah, I think it's it's like 600 pages. It has dozens and dozens of chart patterns in it. Just dozens and dozens of chart patterns. Okay, looks like we had a little uptrend. Looks like we're going to start going back down again. I may re-enter my short here. Yeah, I think I'm going to re-enter my short right here. Okay. RealCrypto.com resources books. Yeah, like Dan says, it's a heavy book, guys. It's 600 pages. It's a lot of statistical analysis. It is... Um, it doesn't relate, like I said, it doesn't relate one-to-one -to, -one to crypto, okay? doesn't relate one-to-one, -one, but the tenant of the chart patterns are still the same. I don't think it, it, it is the same in terms of its statistics, but because um, it, it goes heavily into statistics and the, you know, the possibility of a chart pattern working out and the possibility of it not working out and stop losses. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Uh, someone mentioned NEO. How did I come up with that price and date, Mark? Um, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna stand here that long. I want to answer more questions. I will walk you through that in my next video. I am gonna have a video based on that. Just keep a lookout for that. Will this continue to dip? I, th um, I think we're gonna dip a little bit more. I don't think we're gonna go down precipitously more right now. But depends on your time frame for that dip. Okay, what do we do? Someone says, do you think we could we could be a divine intervention like in form of a very big investor coming to rescue BTC like Bitmain buying out so they could sell more ant miners? Um, and how can you spot? That's the more valid question. So is, in terms of that scenario, no, I think it's not likely I think if that happens, it's going to be in the, that's what's going to happen. Actually, let me rephrase that. That is what will happen to Bitcoin, but it's not going to happen here. No one's going to do it here. Um, those, those whale type of investors, they're, they're not going to do that here. They're going to do that at a much lower level. And it's like I said, I think it's going to happen um, between 3,500 and 2,600 is, is when I think that's going to happen. So someone mentioned Neo. I haven't looked at Neo in a little bit. I know that was kind of bouncing around there. Do do do. Uh, yeah, we go. Let's do Neo. Oh, BNB. That's not a valid chart pattern. Hey, there you go. There's my target for Neo. <laughs> There's my target for Neo. Uh, six six one five three five Bitcoin. But if if Bitcoin's falling, that's going to be harder for that to happen. So let's check out the U.S. dollar. Oh, this is scary. Oh, man, I should have shorted Neo right there. That's a good short. Too busy shorting Bitcoin. Too busy shorting Bitcoin.
What if I take all my ether and put it in Litecoin? I don't know. Let's let's see. Take all your ether and put it in Litecoin. Ladies and gentlemen, if Bitcoin is tanking, the rest of them are going to tank. Um, you can take your money out of crypto and put it into cash, actual fiat if you're scared to go into Tether. But when the markets tank, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be invested. You can actually sit on the sidelines and not trade. That is something you can do. That's most definitely something that you can do. And I would recommend that when the markets are tanking, I wouldn't switch from one crypto to another. I would actually literally just move into Tether or Fiat and leave it be. Can you comment on the dumping on the 24 hour volume to lows we have not seen since November? Seems to me could be a catalyst to dropping much lower than we are right now in the short term. Um, it could be, it could be. Uh, I don't know about that specific setup. I don't know. You mentioned the, the 24 hour volume dropping. I don't know. Oh, we're dropping right now, ladies and gentlemen. 8409. Man, I should have held my initial short down to 8400. I'd be up a full Bitcoin right now. Be up a full Bitcoin right now. Let me um going back to Bitcoin, guys. That's where the action's happening. Let's go ahead and check this out. I don't think that I got uh Bitmex is 84 and change. And BitMix takes a long time to. And then, um, yeah, this here's a hundred dollars higher. I bet you there's problems with. Eighty-five, eighteen, eighty-five. Yeah, it's funny. <sighs> okay, do I have kids? Yes, I do. I have two children. Two children, three and seven. They're cool as hell. So Arthur says, can you lay the truth? Other so-called analysts like to use FIBS, MACD, RSI, and so on. What TA elements actually work in crypto? So Arthur, they all can work in crypto. They're, they're all very valid. The issue, the issue I have with a lot of indicators is that they give a lot of mixed signals. So you have to know how to use those indicators, okay? So I will sometimes use RSI. I don't generally use MACD or Bollinger Bands, but they all are very valid if you have a strategy that works with you and that indicator. Does that make sense? So I can teach anyone to trade. I can teach anyone to trade. I can teach you to trade different time frames. I can teach you to trade um, different asset classes. I can teach you to use volume. I can teach you guys a lot of stuff. In the end, it all comes down to your personality type and the type of experiences you have with different indicators. These are all just tools that you use. And I'm actually, by trade, I'm a low voltage, um, I'm a low voltage technician, right? By trade, I'm a low voltage technician. Um, and I use different physical tools than other low voltage techs use. I literally use different physical tools. I don't carry a stud finder with me. I can go into your house and tell you where your studs are without a stud finder. I don't need one. Okay, that's a tool I don't use. I also don't use MACD most of the time, or ever, really. But you have to know the tools that you're using and know them well enough to know when to listen to them and when not to listen to them. I do occasionally look at the RSI, and that's pretty much the only tool other than price and volume that I use. The re rationale is that every indicator takes price and takes volume into account. And instead of you know, using most of those indicators, I just listen to price and volume. Do I use fibs in my analysis? No. You will see me pull a fib maybe 0.5% of the time that I do analysis. I will pull one from time to time, mainly um, based out of curiosity what the fibs are gonna show, but I, I've never based a trade off of fibs, personally.
isn't BCC the real Bitcoin? No one talks about it much. Um, you know, I don't want to get involved in that argument. I think Bitcoin's Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin Cash. They're two separate blockchains, and whichever one gets more network traffic, gets more network traffic. I don't really, I don't really care. I don't really care. In the end, the market will hash out which is valuable and which is not. So the 24-hour volume for the overall market. So let me go ahead and check that out because maybe I'll maybe I'll. So if I click on 24-hour volume ranking currency, is this what you're referring to? So if I click on Bitcoin, am I going to get? Am I going to get an actual? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let me. Whoop. What happened there? Oh, somehow I clicked on dash in my other window. <laughs> uh, here we go. No. Yeah, I, I don't see where I can get that twenty-four, that that volume that 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 you're referring to. Do I think Satoshi's dumping all of his coins? No, why would I think that? What needs to happen for Bitcoin to go into another bullish phase? The whole psychology of the market needs to shift. What needs to happen for Bitcoin to go into a bullish phase is for everybody that wants to sell Bitcoin needs to sell Bitcoin. And then everyone that wants to buy Bitcoin super cheap will buy Bitcoin super cheap, but it's gonna happen much lower from here. And then um, the people that are, that are hodlers have to sell their Bitcoin. That's what has to happen. The hodlers will cause the bottom in Bitcoin. Not all of them, mind you. There's going to be some people that will hold, but all the hodlers that aren't true hodlers will have to sell their Bitcoin for a, for a bottom to be in. Um, Andrew says, I have a question for the real chat room you're planning to open. Will you have channels related to BitMix trading? Um, Yes, in my in my in my uh, I I don't have a name for that yet, but yes, in my in my premium chat room, I will t I will go into basically everything. Um, you'll gain full access to me, my knowledge, my trading strategies. It's going to be for mentorship. It's going to be for um, you know trading right now. We can you know we'll spend time with each individual with their with their specific portfolios. I mean, you're really going to gain full access to me, my knowledge, um, and anything that that you want to know. I'll, I'll answer basically. 200 buy wall on GDAX, that's cool. I actually already covered my short. My Bitcoin is 0.01 Bitcoin higher now. <laughs> short term, do you think we'll chop around or we'll go lower? Good question, Pato. I actually made a video earlier about this. Um, I think that I think we're gonna chop around. Hold on a second. I got a kid screaming in the other room. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I missed anything here. Buy wall, short term, you think we'll chop around or we'll go lower? Um, I don't know. This selling it does not look like it's stopping, to be quite frank with you. It does not look like it's stopping. So I'm almost to the point where I think we're going to get a big a big capitulation move to the downside, similar, not in magnitude, 
but similar to this, okay? We're gonna have a big spike to the downside and we're gonna have a, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not trading for that theory, but um, this selling's just not stopping. I mean, usually what will happen is you, you'll kind of see, I, I kind of thought this would, would, stop the, would stop the selling. I thought this, this hammer bar with this kind of volume would stop the selling, but uh, it hasn't so far. And actually, actually, we're getting pretty close to that bottom. So if we don't stop here, if we don't stop here, I don't mean like this exact level, but we have 8,400 for a low on the on the BitMEX here. Um, man, that was a good short. Man, I shorted my ass off today. <laughs> uh, yeah, if we don't stop here below 8,400 or, or above 8,400, then I think we're going to get a spike low. If we do stop, I think we're going to start floating upwards a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be too, it's not going to be that aggressive. If you want to take a trade, that's fine, but um, your stop should be 8,400. What happens to altcoins now? They go down. There you go. My number one thing to look at when buying in, a proper chart pattern setup, um, proper volume setup, and um, yeah, charts and volume, price and volume action. That's really my number one thing to look at. Um, it's not one thing though. It's, look, you have to understand you have to understand accumulation and distribution and what's happening when. Sometimes it's unclear, but what I, the number one thing that I really like to look for, Jesse, to be quite honest with you, is what I call a slap you in the face trade, okay? A chart that slaps you in the face and says, buy me. That's my number one thing to look at. Do we trust the move to Tether? Tether could explode. Um, so I will tell you this, I did move money to Tether and then back into GDAX for a hold with the actual US dollar. I don't want, look, I've got, I've got a lot of money in crypto and I don't want, if I'm going to sit it in cash, I'm going to sit it in cash. I'm not going to sit it in Tether. Now, if I'm going to be trading altcoins during a bull market, I have no problem moving it in and out of Tether. But if I'm, if I, like I've been holding Bitcoin for, gosh, um, I moved my money into GDAX a long time ago, weeks ago. I moved money into GDAX weeks ago and I've taken some trades since then. But when I cash out, I cash out into dollars. I'm not trading altcoins right now just due to the volatility of Bitcoin and the fact that if Bitcoin dumps, altcoins are going to dump probably further. So I just haven't touched it. I just haven't touched Tether. It's been all in, in dollars. Many people on YouTube advocated altcoins, but ADA lost 85%. XRP lost 75 of their top values while Bitcoin only lost 55 I don't understand how those YouTubers live with themselves because they don't care. Be quite frank with you. There, you know, there's a lot of guys out there with three and four and five times the amount of subscribers I do. And I can't account for all of them. I don't know who all of them are, but there's a lot of people I've seen that put out just a lot of misinformation and just try to get clicks. And it's not, uh, I don't know. I don't know how they live with themselves either. I can honestly say anything that I've said to you guys, anything that I've said to you guys, I do myself. Okay. Hey, you're getting a nice buying spurt right here. So it looks like the bottom may have been put in. Good buying volume right there off of 8,400 though. That's That's been a little bit different. Um, yeah. I think we're going to get a nice little possible bounce here. But we're going to have to take out a couple of levels first. We're going to have to take out a couple of levels. Like I said, if you want to trade to the upside, you need to have a dead man stop of 80, 8390. 8390. Okay, kick them first. You do your thing. There was a March dip in 2016 and 2017. Then we saw an uptrend again by June. This guy doesn't know what the market's going to do any more than anybody else. Very true. Very true. Although I will say this. Um, no one knows what the market's going to do. Okay? If you... Hmm. That brings up a, a point. 
that brings up a point. What is it? That brings up the point that um, we all seek out information. We all seek out information to make the best decisions we possibly can to trade our accounts according to how we are attempting to invest. Okay? And you're right. I don't know what the market's going to do. But all I got to say is this. I was bearish all through here. I was bullish all through here. And now I'm bearish here again. So if you really don't, if you really weren't bearish this entire time and didn't understand the parabolic move and the market cycle and the 20,000, if you're bullish at all up here, if you're bullish at all up here, not just trading for bounces, then you need to seek advice elsewhere. Um, and I would start with my market cycles webinar because <laughs> it's, it's two hours of talking about market cycles. I show you many different markets and no one knows what the future holds, but if you understand psychology of the markets, herd psychology, price volume analysis, you definitely have an edge over 95% of the people that are trading because most of them don't understand any of it, any of it. And I probably, I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a much better feeling than most people. That's all I'll say. What's my opinion on the narrative stating that futures and general Wall Street and Street renders previous Bitcoin behavior irrelevant now. Um, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Even Wall Street is, um, even Wall Street is kind of beholden to herd psychology. It's different because you have institutions and there's certain behaviors you have to take into account due to those institutional investors. However, um, it is still, is still a psychologically based market. There's a few more factors that have to be taken into account um, but it is still psychology based. Do I think that after the correction, the market will resume its previous behavior, bull run leading to parabolic move? You know what, Charles? I've been asking myself that same question. Will the market go basically repeat 2013? So let me go to Bitstamp here. So what he's asking is, do I think the, the market will repeat its, its boom and bust cycle like we've seen twice in 2013 and once in 2017? You know what? I do. I do think, I think we had a, we had a big boom, we had a bust, we had a boom, we had a bust. Now we have a boom and we have a bust and I think we're going to do another boom. I think we're going to have another boom. Um, these markets are so, each, each of these bases is so highly correlated to the other that that is the only hypothesis that I can ascertain. Now, that being said, in my mind, what I'm thinking is this. What I'm thinking is this. And you guys probably aren't going to get this in my, in my next video, so, so stay with me here. All right, stay with me here. Where's my... Hold on a second. I'm looking for a window. There we go. Okay, my, my hypothesis is this. And I have... Sorry, guys. Looking for yet another window. Oh, I should, you know what, I'm going to, um, where is it, where is it, darn it, okay, there it is, I found it, okay, so, this first parabolic move in Bitcoin, from down here to up here was, uh, 2,600%, 2,600%. From the bottom here to the top here was 1,846.03%. From the bottom here of 152 to our ultimate high of 19,666 was 12,938%. Quite literally, um, unless you think about that for a minute, it boggles the mind how extravagant that percentage move was. So we had a 2,600% jump, an 1,800% jump, and a 13,000% jump. What's the next one going to do? What's the next one going to do? Now, my rationale behind the fact that this is going to happen again and again and again may lead to your actual question, Charles. Is the herd psychology of individuals still in play or is our institutions going to you know, take some of that out of the market? I completely get your question. And it may take a little bit, but think about it. If we go, 
if we go down to 2600 which is like the lowest of my of my um my thought process right now that we can go is 2600 if we do another 2000% that puts us at 50,000 bitcoin and your average run up um actually has been over 2000 like you know let me see if if it'll let me run an average hold on let's see if i can do an average here Okay, so keep in mind we had 2,600% upside, 1,800% upside, 13,000% upside. That gives you an average of 6,600% to the upside. Now, I don't know if we're going to get a 13,000% move. That is such a gargantuan move that I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm a big believer in don't believe anything in the markets, but if we could get, what's 6,600% times 2,600? <laughs> Okay, what is that? Let, let me do the math on another screen here. What was this times this? One hundred and seventy-two thousand dollar Bitcoin. One hundred. That would put us at one hundred and seventy-two thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars. Way too specific. Way too specific. But that puts us. Let's just say. Let's say one hundred fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin. I mean, guys, that just boggles the mind. One hundred fifty thousand Bitcoin on the next bull run. On the next bull run. Now. If you were to do some price analysis based off of these two, you could argue that that we were going to do 2,000%. And 2,000% out of, um, let me do this, 2,000% from 160 of the low. That's a percentage. Whoops. Oh, that's stupid. $3,200. You could have argued that we were going to do $3,200 um, based off of this ultimate low if you were to do the average percentage. So there is going to be a wide variance in what we're actually going to do versus what you're going to be able to forecast. All I got to say is that guys understand market cycles. If you want to make money, understand market cycles because that's what's going to tell you where we're going to go. Okay, I don't know where we're going to go. The market's going to tell you where we're going to go. Okay, the only thing I do on my YouTube videos is I don't sit here and try to sound like a smart ass. I sit here and try to read the markets, ascertain the price action that I know, you know to my best ability and try to, you know, dispel some some information. Um, if we get to 150,000 Bitcoin based off of this market cycle, based off of this run, that's that's your median is 150,000. And that's a 6,000% increase. I mean, that's crazy. That's that, that that's just crazy. So Charles, thanks for that question. Um, like I said, you're not going to get that in my last video. It's going to take way too long. People that watch big people watch my videos for five to six minutes. So I try to make my videos five to six minutes. Okay, it's been a while since I looked at some of these. Do, do, do. I'm late joining, but playing back from the start where real crypto goes live is definitely valuable. Can you take a super quick look at Walmart? WMT, is that Walmart or is that, I'm assuming that's a crypto? <laughs> WMT is the stock symbol for Walmart. I also trade stocks. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Thinking of, speaking of which, I have a stock channel called Real-Stocks. Um, there's a description in, I don't know what's in the bottom of this video, but guys, check that out. I have one video so far. I may do one a week because the stock market's fairly slow, but... If you guys are interested in trading stocks, check that out. Why didn't we get a reversal two candles away? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, the, you're asking why, why didn't this hammer reverse the pattern? Because there's lots of selling in the market. That's why. You know, not every not every hammer, not every pattern, not every candle that should be what it is is what it is. You have to take Guys, you have to understand how to read charts and price and volume analysis. You can't rely on one tool, okay? Everyone knows about the hammer candle. Everyone knows about the hammer candle. Therefore, at some point, someone will make a hammer candle and then kill it, okay? I don't think one person did that here specifically, but um, all, of these, all of these signals are psychological signals, okay? They're all based off of some type of market psychology, and you have to understand other facets to the market as well to understand when these signals are valid and when they're not. 
Guys, I know I'm so far out from the chat. I'm just going to jump down here to get to the bottom. Okay. I don't see how we could go much lower after the November and December sentiment. Um, well, D. to Cherry, you're, you're, you're going to see here shortly. <laughs> In the next couple of months, you're going to see here. That's all I'm going to say about that. The question is, at what price will you buy as much as possible? If I see a capitulation move in Bitcoin um, at extreme lows, like I said, sub 4,000, sub 4,000, um, I will probably try to go all in at that point. I have just invested in crypto. Want to say to my grandchildren, I was in the biggest scam of the century. Well, if you're in the biggest scam of the century, um, Bernie Madoff was the one to invest in. So, sorry to tell you, Bart. Um, crypto is not a scam. Crypto is not a scam. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that think the stock market's a scam based based off of the 2008 market. Well, guess what? Your opinion of something doesn't make it a fact. Bitcoin is not a scam. A scam is perpetrated by one individual or one series of individuals for their own betterment. The fact that cryptocurrency has created an asset class that is worth in the hundreds of billions of dollars traded by millions of people around the globe and not, I mean, there's not a thousand people that control cryptocurrencies. The people that control cryptos are in the millions. So it's not a scam. If the Mt. Gox trustee hadn't shorted the Bitcoin, do you think Bitcoin downtrend would have not happened? Considering he might do that again and again, why would anyone invest any money in Bitcoin? So first off, Shiva, he did not short the Bitcoin market. He sold Bitcoin. So there's a bit of a difference there. And second of all, um, considering he might do that again, why would anyone invest any money in Bitcoin? Welcome to a partial reason why Bitcoin is going lower. Welcome to a partial reason why Bitcoin is going lower. At what point will you will no one sell anymore? That will be the bottom. You really think all the whales that control the market are going to sell at three thousand? No. What's going to happen? Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right there. Fuya, Fuya. Um, I, I stated this earlier. The last people that will sell will be the will be the fake hodlers. The fake hodlers will cause the bottom of the market. The whales will buy that. The whales will buy the coins of the fake hodlers when they finally sell. When the pain is just too much, just too much for you to emotionally hold on to, and boom, you you hit that sell button. That's when the whales buy. That's when the bottom is. Seems to me you're quite bullish after all, at least in the long run. Thanks for your answer. I am most definitely bullish in the long run. Um, if you guys, look, if you guys want want to see if, if guys, this, this is so, I, I've been struggling with this for the past several months on YouTube. Um, not everyone gets to see all of my videos. Not everyone gets to see my full synopsis. I is a person. Guys, I'm a person, okay? Me as a person um, has a lot of thoughts flowing through my head and I put a lot of those out on video and I think there's a time series of events in my videos that everyone understands. And I also understand that's not the case, but it's really hard to convey all of my thoughts in that time series in a way that everyone can understand. So when I say crypto's done, I mean in the media, I mean in the intermediate time. I don't mean forever. You know, people that think I think Bitcoin is going to zero have only watched me for three minutes and don't listen to them. So MM mindset says buy the dips, you dipshits. Okay, so MMA, MMA, MMA mindset. Let me ask you a question. One on one, man to man. Okay, one on one, man to man. Do you want to buy this dip? 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 Okay. How much money do you have? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like buy the dip. Buy the dip, it works great in this chart. This is where you buy the dip, okay? Any of this, you can buy the dip. 
You buy all these dips. You buy all of these dips. And I explain this in my market cycles webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, you buy all these dips. There's the ultimate low in Bitcoin, 160. You buy all these dips. Okay? You're in an uptrend here. You're in an uptrend here. Does this look like an uptrend to you? Does this look like the price is trending higher? Does this look like the price is trending higher? Okay? So, okay, MMA mindset. What I think you're saying is you want people to buy Bitcoin now and hold for over a year. Is that what you're saying? If that's what you're saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. If you want, if, if you as an individual, if you as an individual, if you as an individual want to hold Bitcoin for a year plus, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay? If you guys have watched me for any period of time, if you guys have watched me and listened to me for any period of time, I've said several times, if you want to hold and buy Bitcoin for a year, if you're not scared if Bitcoin goes to five grand, I like your plan. I like your plan. I'm not here to push my plan on you guys. But the point of the matter is that a vast majority of my viewers have an intermediate time frame when it comes to trading. Okay? They have an intermediate time frame. Those people that want to buy Bitcoin and hold for a year plus generally don't watch these videos. Because guess what? They buy Bitcoin and they shut off the computer. Okay? Most of the people, most of the people here want Bitcoin here to go up. They don't want Bitcoin to go down, okay? That means they're not longer-term investors. That means they're not longer-term investors. That means they're investors that are more concerned about making money in the short term. They may actually have invested money they cannot afford to invest, which I also advocate against. I completely advocate against that. In my trading courses, I literally have a lesson in there about you becoming debt-free. I literally have, I literally have a course in there about how to manage your personal finances and I teach you that before I teach you how to trade. Because trading in the intermediate term, short term, is extraordinarily risky. If you're trading with rent money, you're gonna make really bad decisions and you're gonna lose your rent money or at least a big portion of it. So, oh, Tobias, sorry about that. You have mentioned Walmart several times. I go off on my tangents. I didn't want to ignore you. And how come I don't see it here? Is that a very small coin? I don't see WMT anywhere here, buddy. Or do you literally mean, or do you mean stocks, Walmart and stocks? Do you actually mean stocks? If you did, I missed that. So go ahead and post a comment. I will definitely look at that next. I apologize. You did ask for that a long time ago. Um, okay, Walmart stock. I'll do that. I don't care. I like stocks. If you want to talk stocks, I'll talk stocks. <laughs> How do I increase your Bitcoin value in the dip? I mean, accumulate, sell, and buy back. So Alibaba, if you want to do that, BitMEX is your best bet. I've actually been doing that, Alibaba, and I traded, I put a 0.15 Bitcoin into my BitMEX account. It's now worth one Bitcoin. It's now worth one Bitcoin. So you can do that. Um, you're going to have to do that through BitMEX though. And I actually have an affiliate link for BitMEX if you would be so kind to try to help support the channel. Um, hold on, I'm going to sign into my my uh, my uh, stock trading platform here. Um, all right, there we go. Gosh, I love looking at this. <laughs> what? This didn't, that's not right. I wasn't looking at BA. Oh gosh, 200. Well, it's at the 200 day average here. Ooh, gosh, I don't like that at all. What's your, what's your question about this? How much do, how much do you want me to throw up in my mouth? Is that the question? Because it's a lot. I want to throw up a lot in my mouth when I look at that chart. So... Video's gone black? Aw, oh, crap. 
Why did that happen? Um, I may have to... St you know what? This has been happening a little bit lately on OBS. I'm just going to keep talking for now while I try to fix this without restarting. Um, but I, don't, I think I'm going to have to restart because every time this happens, I can't get it up effectively. Display capture. Nope, that's the wrong one. Let me try this. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I know I got a black screen. Bear with me. Aha. This may work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay, let me do this. Let me switch to my other screen. Bear with me. It's coming back. Okay, so hopefully you, you see my screen again. And you see my OBS console. And I'm going to have to switch everything around because it doesn't, doesn't like that one. Um, okay. So sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That was kind of weird. I'm going to have to switch my screens here. Apparently OBS didn't want to do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Walmart stock analysis. So, um, first of all, it's down at this 200 day moving average. That is, that's very interesting. Okay. Do, do, do. All right, sorry guys, I spent a while doing that. Um, you guys were asking me where did I short. I'll, sh I'll walk you through my shorts. So Tobias, Tobias, give me a little bit about what you want to ask about Walmart specifically. Are you looking to buy? Are you looking to sell? Give me a actual question because I could go on for days about this one. Greg asks, what is a fake hodler? A fake hodler is someone that's going to create the low in Bitcoin after they sell. That's a fake hodler. That's a fake hodler. Stocks are the old paradigm. Uh, that's not the case, Robert. You know what? Stocks are a different asset class. Cryptocurrencies are a different asset class. They're two completely different things. They're two completely separate things. Cryptos can't replace stocks. Okay? Stocks can't replace cryptos. They're two different things. That's like saying trucks are the old paradigm and cars are dead. No, they're just a different tool to use. It's just a different tool to use. So I'm going to get out of stocks here until I get a specific question. But Walmart being at the 200-day average, you could get a bounce from here. Um, you could get a bounce from here. This could continue lower, but I don't like anything near the 200-day. Let me move this over. There we go. Okay. Ooh, you know what? What does a depth chart show? I can actually show you a depth chart right here. So a depth chart shows you the orders that are currently on that exchange. Okay, the, the current these are the orders that are currently on the exchange and it shows you. The problem with looking at orders on the exchange is they can be ripped, they can be pulled off at any time. Okay, they can be they can be ripped from the exchange. Sometimes you'll see what's called a sell wall. Like this would be considered a wall. Right here, this is actually a buy wall, but this would be considered a wall. This is so you're sitting here thinking, oh, someone's gonna buy, you know, a, a thousand bitcoins at eighty three, eighty three, eighty three hundred dollars. Well, that may not actually be, um, they may not actually be a, that may not actually be a valid buy wall. They can pull that buy wall at a moment's notice. One penny before that price hits, they can pull that buy wall. So Mark says, I've made millions in stocks. Mark, you and I should talk. <laughs> I love to talk with successful traders. Love it. So John says, I've been doing $50 a week, dollar cost averaging, buying the large dips. I don't plan on selling till four years from now after watching this. It might be on a huge spike up. Um, John, I respect you for what you've been doing wholeheartedly respect you for what you've been doing and I appreciate your strategy. Wholeheartedly, no bullshit.
That's awesome. Good for you. I think crypto will replace stocks. Look into polymath. Well, Andrew, Andrew Starr, I think you don't understand what a stock is. I don't think you understand what a stock is. Now, if you think in the future that the stock market can live on a cryptocurrency blockchain, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. I, I wholeheartedly believe that, but in the end, it will still be a stock market. A stock is a representation of ownership in a company. That's what a stock is. If you guys buy Ripple, you think you own Ripple? You don't own anything. You don't own any part of Ripple. You own nothing. You basically own oil as a commodity. If you buy oil, you don't own all of the oil market. You own a little bit of oil. In the same way that if you buy Ethereum, you don't own Ethereum. You own a little bit of what runs or is currency on the Ethereum network. But you don't own Ethereum in the same way that... Um, yeah, you don't own Ethereum. But if you own one share of IBM, you are a literal owner of IBM. So it, it is completely different from the stock market. They're two completely different things. Should I buy Bitcoin right now? I don't know. I don't have the chart up. Let me see. Um, there's a case here for a potential trade that I see. Um, low volume rise. I'm not involved. I'm not, you know what, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not buying Bitcoin. I am not buying anything in Bitcoin. Anything, anything, anything in Bitcoin. So until I see a, an actual setup, um, I don't buy bottoms like this. You know what? Let me, let me show you something. You guys want to know where I shorted Bitcoin? I'm going to show you right now where I shorted Bitcoin. I shorted Bitcoin right here. Okay. I shorted a Bitcoin up here somewhere. I shorted a Bitcoin right here. I shorted a Bitcoin this morning right here. No joke. I shorted a Bitcoin right here. I covered right about there. Right about there. So, um, yeah, I'm not buying. I didn't buy any of this. I could have tried to force a trade up here, but I didn't buy any of this. Okay? Didn't buy any of it. I've wondered, is the depth chart truly representing the actual orders? Does the buy side represent potential stop losses, which aren't buys, they are sell orders? Um, the depth chart is garbage. Don't look at a depth chart, to be quite frank with you. You want to look at what is what trades have actually occurred, okay? If there's, if there's something happening and you're looking at the very middle of this depth chart, okay, that, I think that's okay. But what I've seen time and time again is these these walls just fall away. These walls fall away. They're, some of them are very fake. Some of them are very real. But the rubber hits the road in the middle. The rubber hits the road literally right at the, at the extreme ask and the extreme bid closest to the current price. That is literally, that is literally the only part that matters. Not, you can look at the rest of it, but it's peripheral information. Please share your thoughts on polymath if you don't think stock market can be replaced. I don't have any thoughts on polymath. Really don't. If it's a blockchain um, that tries to replace the stock market or put stocks onto a blockchain, then I think it could. Um, then I think it could um, do something. But so Trip says seriously, what are donations for a children's home supporting some worthwhile cause? Sorry, my first time on your channel, and that just stuck out. Hoping for a good response. My donations are for me. Um, if you, if you, if I've saved you money, if you like my analysis, if you respect someone putting out really free, good information, they're for me. That's for me. It's a donation for me, for me personally to help feed my family and, um, stuff like that. But I don't make enough money to have a charity yet. <laughs> I'd like to get there someday, but the donations are, are for me. Right now, those donations go in for, for a hodling wallet for me, actually, I don't, I don't touch those donations. They sit in my wallet. Why do you buy back BTC while you're shorting when the market is going down like crazy? The reason that I'm doing that is because I'm trading extremely high leverage. I'm trading a 25 times leverage position. And if that goes against me at all, it evaporates my profit extraordinarily quickly. And you never know when a market's going to bounce. 
even though I don't think it's going to bounce, you never know when a market's going to bounce. And um, yeah, you never know when a market's going to bounce. So I, I um, always remove my profits from the market. So Tapirium IO says, love your channel. Can you check, can you shout out Tapirium.io? Um, I have no idea what that is. If you're an ICO, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Um, I don't know much about your 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 ICO though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here for the day. Um, I appreciate you watching the live stream. Any last and final questions? I'll give you guys give you guys a little time to ask and final questions. I think my dinner is actually long cold. I completely forgot about it. I'm not sure how long I've been going live here. Um, looks like an hour and 10 minutes, a little bit longer than I wanted to. Whoa, what happened there? A little bit longer than I wanted to. Show you how to short bow says that's, I can't do that in, um, in a, in a live stream video. That's what my courses are for, buddy. Okay, so you bought Walmart above the 200 SMA and stop loss below. I like the inverse hammer and doji candle. Was wondering what I thought about it. Let's check it out again. Um, I, you know, it could be good. I do like your stop below the 200 day moving average. Um, I don't like the volume down here, to be quite frank with you. Um, not a huge fan of the volume. I think you're going to get stopped out before it goes higher. And um, that that's my thoughts on that. All right, you're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chaser, have I ever done arbitrage in a crypto? I did try it back when it was actually somewhat profitable and it didn't really work out. Um, I did make a little bit of money, but it just wasn't worth the hassle. It was like a 2% gain by the time all the transfers and fees were done. Pat OS, I've been ho hodling some alts that I believe in and accumulating at these prices. Good idea. Just sell it into Bitcoin instead of this market. Um, I think alts are due some massive pain as this bear market continues. You think it's been bad so far? Double that. And um, that's just my opinion. We don't necessarily have um, a change of direction in markets yet. So I just think it's going to be, I think it's going to be bad juju. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining the stream. I appreciate you watching and sticking with me. I will see you guys next time.